All right, Asus, you're up next. Let's see what you've done with the Asus TUF X870 Plus Wi-Fi that you're charging a whopping $310 for it, making it one of the more expensive X870 boards on the market. Well, starting off with CPU power, they included 16 plus 2 plus 1 power phases rated at 80 amps, making it one of the better VRM configs we've seen so far on this channel, especially when combined with two full 8 pins as well. So while that's good and all for overclocking or whatnot, not really something that's going to really impact the average user a lot. However, then we make our way down to the PC expansion and this is where things get a bit harder to justify, seeing how you have just two PCIe slots here, with the main one of course being Gen 5 and the other one being a Gen 4 4X slot. And while I know most people just have a graphics card in the system nothing else, but it's still a bit on the low side for this price. On the N2 side, at least you can install up to 4 NVMEs, with one of the N2 slots being Gen 5. However, if you install anything in the second slot, that's going to cut the bandwidth to your graphics card in half, while if you install anything in the fourth slot, it's going to actually flat out disable the second PCIe slot, making the overall PCI Express situation on this mobile board pretty dire. And what definitely doesn't help is the fact you only get two city connectors for additional storage, which at this price is just flat out unacceptable. At least you get eight fan connectors, which should be enough for most people. And while you do have three addressable RGB connectors, for some reason you don't have any old fashioned four pin ones for non addressable legacy devices, which I know that people People are starting to migrate away from those, but still, for the sake of compatibility, why? Pretty much every single other motherboard has that, even way cheaper ones. Anyway, then you get to the rear I.O. And while the amount of USB Type-A ports is something Asus sometimes struggled with before, it's nice to see a whopping 8 here, with only one of them actually being Gen 2, which is a nice touch. Plus you also get two full-fledged 40 gigabit per second USB Type-C ports here as well, which is a trend I loved seeing this generation. Add to that HDMI for integrated graphics, plus also 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 7, which is to be expected, and to top it all off, five audio jacks. Though unfortunately for some reason optical split is missing, which again I know not many people use, but again it's just one of those basic features you'd expect at this kind of price. And it really all comes down to the price. Unless you just really like the kind of gamery yet industrial aesthetic that Asus tough components have and you have other tough PC parts already that match this, I have no idea how ASUS can justify this kind of price given how many cheaper motherboards are already covered that do pretty much the same thing, if not better, than this model. On the one hand, I want to call this flat out daylight robbery, but on the other hand, I want ASUS to actually send me review samples, but on the other, other hand, they still have never sent me any samples, so I guess I'm free to say whatever I want about this thing. But if for whatever reason you want to buy it, then our Amazon and New York links to it will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below, where you'll also find our Patreon, which is definitely a much better deal than this mobile board. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Ronyak, Bartosz Volker, Patrick Harrison, the pseudonym, Max Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Level Up, and Robert Sanders. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.